Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pharmaceutical Calculation Solve Along. In this video, we are going to take a look at seven milliequivalent equivalent calculations practice questions to deepen your understanding. Now, if you need a more exhaustive tutorial on milliequivalent equivalence calculations, or you just want to see more examples, then I'm going to put a link to a playlist in the description, and then you can check out the other videos that have been solved on the channel. Now, if you are watching this video live, be sure to put your questions in the comments. And if you happen to be watching the replay, then just go ahead and leave your questions in the comment section. But having said that, let's get right to the questions. The first question states, how many milli equivalents of sodium ion will be contained in a 15 milliliter volume of the following buffer? So you have sodium phosphate dibasic heptahydrate, which is the first ingredient in there, you have 180 grams of that. And then you have the sodium phosphate, you have the monobasic monohydrate, which is 480 grams. And the total volume of the preparation is 1000 milliliters. You've also been given the molecular weights of the sodium phosphate dibasic heptahydrate and also the sodium phosphate monobasic monohydrate. Now, the way the question is framed, you can actually just go ahead and solve the milli equivalents for the 1000 milliliter version and then scale it down to 15 ml or go ahead and find what the weights would be for the 15 milliliter volume and then you would end up with the milli equivalents that you need so we're going to use that route and so the first thing we want to do here is actually to determine the weights of the individual ingredients now you need to recall that milli equivalents is equal to the weight in milligrams divided by the molecular weight times valence. So we're gonna use this equation to find the milli equivalents of both ingredients for the sodium phosphate dibasic heptahydrate as well as the sodium phosphate monobasic monohydrate. And so let's start off by scaling down. This is for a thousand milliliter volume Notice we need it for a 15 milliliter volume. So the thing we want to do is find out what the quantity will be in milligrams for these ingredients. Now let's start off with the heptahydrate. So we're going to focus on this compound. And the first thing we want to do is find the amount in milligrams. So we'll start off with the 180 grams. So you have 180 grams. Now this is in a thousand milliliter preparation, we want to find out how many grams will be in 15 milliliters. Now, once again, this 15 milliliters is from the question. We need to scale this formula down to that volume. So we'll go ahead and solve for X. X is going to be equal to 180 grams times 15 milliliters divided by a thousand milliliters. And this ends up giving 2.7 grams. Of course, the ML will cancel out and you are left with units of grams. But we need it to be in milligrams in order to use this equation. So we do a quick conversion. One gram is equal to a thousand milliliters. The grams cancel out. Then you end up with 2,700 milligrams. So we've now found the amount in milligrams. And the next thing we need is the valence because we've already been given the molecular weight. The molecular weight for the heptahydrate, which we are focusing on right now, is given as 268. So now let's move on and find the valence. What we have is essentially Na2HPO4, and then you have seven molecules of water, so a heptahydrate, so dot seven H2O. So this is a dot right here. And just so that it's very clear, when you put this in an aqueous environment, it's going to dissociate. And it's going to dissociate into the cation and the anion. So a useful trick here is if you are not sure how it breaks down, just focus on what the cation is. It's normally going to be a group one, group two, or group three elements. So here you have sodium, and you want to write that down. So sodium has a positive charge, one positive charge. 
and then everything else becomes your anion. But notice, this seven molecules of water is just water, so it will go into water, it doesn't dissociate like the other components do. And so you're going to end up with the HPO4, and this is going to be two minus. How do you know that? Because there's a two right here. So what that means is because this compound needs to be electrically neutral, you need to have two of the sodium cations to balance the charge out because you have two times positive one, which would be two, and then it neutralizes the negative charge here. But when you talk about the valence of a compound, it's the absolute value of either the charge on the anion or the charge on the cation. So the valence of the compound here is going to be two. Okay, so either you find the absolute of negative 2, so absolute of negative 2 from the anion here, which would be 2, or you just do 2 times 1, so absolute of positive 2 is also 2. So the valence is still going to be 2, nonetheless. So now we have everything we need to find the milli equivalents for the heptahydrate, the sodium phosphate dibasic heptahydrate. And we're going to plug this into the equation, so milli equivalents. It's going to be equal to 2700 that's coming from the quantity we calculated here divided by the molecular weight molecular weight is 268 we multiply this by the valence and that's going to be equal to 20.15 now we just found for one of the components so we need to repeat the process for the sodium phosphate monobasic monohydrate okay so we're going to scroll down just take a snapshot of this question and we're going to do the same process for the monohydrate okay so what is going to look like here is you're going to have once again the equation is milli equivalence is equal to weight in milligrams divided by molecular weight times the valence and if you are solving along we are focusing right now on the sodium phosphate monobasic monohydrate so here again we want to scale it from a thousand to 15 ml and we need it to be milligrams as well so we're going to take the 480 grams which is coming from here divide that by a thousand ml because it is in a thousand ml preparation and we want to determine how many grams is going to be present in the 15 milliliter preparation. And so we're going to solve for X. X is going to be equal to 480 grams times 15 milliliters divided by 1,000. The milliliters cancel out. And now this is going to be equal to 7.2. But this is grams we need it to be milligrams so we multiply this by the conversion factor one gram is a thousand milligrams okay so the grams cancel out and you're now having seven to two hundred milligrams the next thing we need so we found this piece we need the valence so in the previous example we just want to repeat the same process that we did for determining the valence but this time we're focusing on this compound so what you have is NaH2PO4. You put this dot H2O, okay? So you put this in an aqueous environment. The water goes with the water. And then it dissociates into a sodium cation and the H2PO4 minus anion. So here you have one charge on the sodium cation and an, uh, the negative charge on the anion. Now, the valence, once again, is the absolute of either the charge on the anion or the charge on the cation. So regardless of what you use, absolute of positive one is going to be one, and absolute of negative one is also going to be one. So the valence here is going to be equal to one. And so what we want to do now is find the milli equivalence. We put everything back into the equation. The molecular weight was given as 138. So we do MEQ is equal to 7200 divided by 138 times 1 and that's going to be equal to 52.17 
Now, you're looking for the total quantity of the sodium, the total milli equivalence of the sodium in there. So you're getting sodium from both of the compounds. So the total in there will be the sum of this value, the 52.17 from the monohydrate, and also the, the value from the heptahydrate. Here. So we need to add this 20.15 to the 52.17. So we're going to go back to the previous screen and do that sum here. So the answer to this question is going to be equal to, let's do total MEQ is going to be equal to the 20.15 plus the 52.17, and that's going to end up being equal to 72.32. So that's how you really want to do this question. This is the first example. You're just trying to deepen the understanding. You can reflect on some of the steps. The key thing always where I notice most of the time there are issues is what happens with the valence. So we, we try to review that. It's always the absolute of the charge on either the cation or the anion. If you're having trouble, always try to identify the anion in the always try to identify the cation in the compound. So in this example is sodium right here. So once you pull that thing out, everything else is gonna be your anion. Alright, so let's move on to the next question. Now if you're liking this type of content, just be sure to look to click the like button or subscribe so that it helps other colleagues also get to see the video and learn from it. So this question says, a patient is to receive 10 million equivalents of potassium gluconate and it gives the molecular formula four times a day for three days. If the dose is to be one teaspoonful in a cherry syrup vehicle, A, how many grams of potassium gluconate should be used, and B, what volume in milliliters should be dispensed to provide the prescribed dosage regimen? So let's analyze the question. We start off by looking at the A part. So we are focusing right now on um, part A which says how many grams. Which says how many grams of potassium gluconate. So what we want to do here is actually, first of all, determine the milli equivalents. So we are going to end up using the milli equivalent equation. But what it is is we are going to find the total milli equivalents that the patient is taking, put that in the equation to find the quantity in milligrams, and then we'll basically convert the milligrams to grams. That'll be the first step. So let's see how that actually plays out. So what is happening is this patient is taking 10 milli equivalents. So this is for the part A. 10 milli equivalents each time. So let's just put here one time. And they are taking this four times in one day. And they are doing this for, from the question for three days. Okay, so three days. And by the way, if you are keeping track of your units, since this is dimension analysis, you can just cancel these out. And then you're left with the total, the milli equivalents. And this actually is 120 milli equivalents. So we are at the point where we are going to utilize this equation. Milli equivalents equals milligrams over molecular weight times valence. Now, this is a useful equation to memorize. If you haven't, just go ahead and memorize it. If you understand, if you want to understand where it comes from, just go check out the other video on milli equivalence calculations. I will put a link to that in the description, and I'll link it in the, this, um, the cards as well. But this is useful for you to memorize. Otherwise, you may struggle in terms of answering the question. Now, what we just found is what is on the left-hand side, and our ultimate goal here is to determine the quantity in milligrams and then 
convert that to grams. So the one piece we are missing is the valence. So let's focus on that for now. Now potassium gluconate is given, the molecular formula is given here. So you have C6, H11, K, O7. Now when you put this in an aqueous environment or you put it in water, it's going to dissociate. The trick here is to identify the cation, which is potassium. You pull that out. Potassium is a group one element, so it has a charge of positive one. And everything else is going to be your anion. So you have C6, H11, O7, minus. All right, so now let's talk about the valence. So valence is going to be either the absolute charge on the cation or the absolute charge on the anion. So the valence here is going to be equal to 1. And then we can solve for the quantity in milligrams. So now the milligrams is going to be equal to, so we are rearranging this equation right here. So milligrams is going to be equal to MEQ times molecular weight divided by the valence. And so that would imply that milligrams is going to be equal to 120 times molecular weight, which is given as 234 divided by 1. And that's equal to 280 80 milligrams. So 20,080. Now, notice we need this to be in grams, so we're going to convert the milligrams to grams. And so that would imply that you have 28080 milligrams. We convert that to grams using one gram is equal to using 1,000 milligrams is equal to one gram. The milligrams cancel out, and now you have 28.08 grams. So that's the answer to part A. Now for part B, it's asking for the volume in milliliters that needs to be dispensed. So the way we tackle that is to basically make use of the idea that you have it's a teaspoonful. So that is 5 ml. Each dose is 5 ml. So 5 ml per dose. Now from the question is 4 times a day. So that means there are four doses per day. And this is for three days. So you multiply by three days. So that cancels out. That cancels out. And your volume is going to be 5 ml times 4 times 3. And that's going to be equal to 60 milliliters. All right, so hopefully this is making good sense. Now, let's see what the next question looks like. So this question says, K-tab, which is a slow release potassium chloride tablet, contains 750 milligrams of potassium chloride in a wax polymer matrix. How many milliequivalents of potassium chloride are supplied by a dosage of one tablet three times a day? So here again, we're going to use the milliequivalents equation. And what that looks like is, is MEQ equals milligrams divided by molecular weight times the valence. So the number of things that we need, we need the molecular weight. Now, the molecular weight of uh, potassium chloride is actually about 74.5, so we're going to use that. Then we need a valence. So valence, when you take potassium chloride, which is KCl, and you put that in an aqueous environment, it's going to dissociate into the potassium cation and the chloride anion. So here again, the valence is either the charge, absolute charge on the cation, which would be absolute of positive one, which is one, or the absolute of negative one, which is one. So either the char absolute charge on the cation or that of the anion. And so here, the valence of KCl is one. 
Now, the next piece that we need is the quantity in milligrams. And the way we capture that is to make use of the information that you have 750 milligrams in one tablet, okay, per tablet. So we will do 750 milligrams in one tablet. The patient takes one tablet each time and they take it three times per day. So that counts us out. And then that gives us the number of milligrams per day as the question requires. So you want to multiply all the terms in the numerator. So 750 milligrams times one times three divided by what's in the denominator, which is one. And so you end up having 750 milligrams times one times three divided by one times one times day. And this is going to be equal to 2250 milligrams per day. So we can now substitute the milligrams, the valence, and the molecular weight into the equation. And that would imply that your MEQ is going to be equal to 2250 divided by molecular weight 74.5 times valence. Valence was calculated to be 1. And you end up having 30.2. So, once again, if you have any questions, if you are watching this on the replay and you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'll get to them as soon as I see them. Now, if you like this kind of content, just click the like button as well or subscribe so that you can send the video out to more students who need to learn from it. All right, so let's move on to the next example. So here the question says, marble liquid contains 520 milligrams of calcium carbonate and 400 milligrams of magnesium carbonate in each teaspoon dose. If a patient takes two teaspoonfuls after every meal, how many media equivalents of calcium and magnesium is she receiving per day, assuming that she eats three times, assuming she eats three meals per day? So there are two things we need to calculate here, the media equivalents of um, calcium and magnesium. So let's start off with the calcium. Let's talk about calcium. Okay, so what's the strategy here? We know we are going to end up using this equation, which is MEQ equals milligrams over molecular weight times valence. And so there are a few things we need. We need the molecular weight, the valence, and the quantity in milligrams. So let's start off with the valence this time. What we have is calcium carbonate, the molecular formula is CaCO3. You put that in water, it dissociates into the calcium cation, and then you have a carbonate anion. The valence is going to be either the absolute of the charge on the cation or the absolute of the charge on the anion. So in either case, the valence of calcium carbonate is going to be 2. And in terms of molecular weight, you can easily calculate the molecular weight of um, calcium carbonate, or you could just pull that off from Google or somewhere. And the molecular weight of calcium carbonate is going to be equal to 100. And that's why the way you calculate it is to take the atomic weight of calcium, which is 40 plus 12 plus 16 times 3, and that's how you get 100. Now, the last piece that is missing is the quantity in milligrams. And the way we are going to capture that is to make use of the information that you have 520 milligrams of calcium carbonate in uh, each teaspoonful, and the patient is taking two teaspoonfuls three, three times a day because it's after every meal, and the patient takes three meals per day. So let's capture that down here. We start off with the notion 520 milligrams per teaspoon, so one TSP times 
two teaspoons, so two TSP per meal. And then you have three meals per day. So that cancels out, that cancels out. And you end up having 520 milligrams times two times three divided by one times day. Now this is going to be equal to 3120 milligrams. So now we are all set to use the equation. So MEQ is going to be equal to 3120 divided by 100 times 2. That's going to be equal to 62.4. So we just did the calcium piece. Now if you are solving along, you can go ahead and do the amount in for or the milliequivalents for magnesium. But then we can also do it together. So let's do that. Let's do it together. So let's focus on this time magnesium. So you're more or less going to repeat the same process. And so it should be more familiar to you this time. Uh, once again, we're going to start off with the equation as our guide. Milliequivalence equals weight in milligrams divided by molecular weight times their valence. So we're going to use the same process. We we'll start off by determining the valence. Now, magnesium carbonate is actually having a molecular formula of MgCO3. And you put this in an aqueous environment, you put it in water, it dissociates into the magnesium cation and the carbonate anion. So here, the valence is going to be equal to either the absolute charge on the cation or the absolute charge of the anion. And so in either case, it's going to be absolute of 2 and that gives you two. Now, once you've determined this, let's talk about the molecular weight. The molecular weight of magnesium carbonate, you can either easily add that up or simply refer to literature or Google. And you're going to have 24 plus 12 plus 16 times 3. And that ends up being equal to essentially... 84. And so the last piece would be the quantity in milligrams. So once again, you have 400 milligrams of magnesium in each teaspoonful. Patient takes two teaspoonfuls after every meal, and the patient takes three meals per day. Right. So what that looks like then is you have 400 milligrams per teaspoon. Full. You're taking two teaspoonfuls per meal, and the patient takes three meals a day. So, so that cancels out. That cancels out. And what we are using here actually is dimension analysis. So you multiply all the terms in the numerator. So 400 milligrams times two times three divided by all the terms the denominator, so divided by one times day. Now, this is going to be equal to 2,400 milligrams. And now we can put all this information back into the equation. So that would imply the milliequivalence. Once again, it's going to be equal to 2,400 divided by molecular weight, which is 84, times, now, times the valence, which is basically two, and that's going to be equal to 57.14. So hopefully all of this is making good sense, it's good practice, you are deepening your understanding of the concept on milli uh, equivalence calculations, and as you go through these problems, you are getting more and more proficient. Now, let's look at another example. Let's take it to another level. So,
So slightly different. This question says a normal 70 kilogram, which is 105, 154 pound adult has 80 to 100 grams of sodium. It is primarily distributed in the extracellular fluid. Body retention of one gram additional of sodium results in excess body water accumulation of approximately 310 milliliters. If a person retains 100 milli equivalents of extra sodium, how many milliliters of additional water could be expected to be retained? So this question looks complex, but actually it's still based on milli equivalents calculations. So the strategy here is we're going to find the amount in milligrams using the milli equivalence equation and then convert the milligrams to grams and use this correlation where one gram of additional sodium requires 310 ml to determine the volume, right? So that's the thought process. That's the logic we're going to flow, uh, the logic we're going to follow. So let's go ahead and determine what the milli equivalence is for when you have 100 MEQ of sodium. So what we have is the original equation, milli equivalents is equal to milligrams divided by molecular weight times valence. Now here, you're talking specifically of sodium. So the molecular weight of sodium is going to be equal to 20 and the valence the valence of sodium as an ion is going to be equal to 1 and of course the quantity that you are looking for the milli equivalence already, the milli equivalence already given is 100 so what we can do is we can rearrange this equation right here so that we have milligrams as the subject and so that would imply that milligrams is actually equal to milli equivalents times molecular weight over valence. And we can put in the numbers now. So we, for milli equivalents is once again 100 from here. So that's equal to 100 times molecular weight of sodium, which is 23, times the valence, which is 1. And so that's equal to 2,300 milligrams. But notice we need to get this in grams. So 1,000 milligrams is one gram. The milligrams cancel out. This is going to be equal to 2.3 grams. So what you do next, you, you now make use of that correlation in the question. Now, what it's saying is, for every gram of excess sodium, you accumulate approximately 310 milliliters of um, water. So we're going to capture that as a proportion. So 310 ml goes with one gram of extra or additional sodium. The question then becomes, how many milliliters will be associated with 2.3 grams? So let's go ahead and solve for x, which is the unknown. x is going to be equal to 310 milliliters times 2.3 grams divided by 1 gram. And this is going to be equal to 713 milliliters. All right, excellent. So now let's move on to the next example. So this question says, magnesium citrate laxative solution, also known as citroma, contains 1.745 grams of magnesium citrate per fluid ounce of solution. Express the concentration of magnesium in this solution as milli equivalents per milliliter. So what we want to do is, First, determine the quantity in milligrams per ml, and then go ahead and use the equation. 
So we have 1.745 grams in one fluid ounce and one fluid ounce is equal to 29.57 milliliters so the ounce cancels out you are now in grams per ml and we want to convert the grams to milligrams so one gram is a thousand milligrams and so what we can do is the grams can cancel out and the fluid ounce is already cancelled out and so what we do next is we multiply all the terms in the numerator so 1.745 times 1 times 1000 milligrams divided by 29.57 milliliters so this is going to be equal to essentially 59.01 milligrams per milliliter so we can now go ahead and use the equation so the equation states that you have milli equivalents equals milligrams over molecular weight times valence that's the original equation now if you divide both sides by volume quantity like milliliters then now you have a derivative of that equation and you can actually use that to directly find the milliequivalents per milliliter so that's what we are going to do here and to do that we also need to know a number of things we need to know the molecular weight so the molecular weight of magnesium citrate so let's put that here is actually going to be 451.13 also the next now we need is the valence so the valence of magnesium citrate is going to be equal to 6 and the question will be how do you actually end up having 6 so that's based on the molecular formula and so what we need now is to substitute all these values back into the equation so we end up having milli equivalents per milliliter equals the milligrams per ml which we calculated here so 59.01 divided by molecular weight which is 451.13 times 6 and this is going to be equal to approximately according to my calculator 0.78 All right, so let's take a look at the next example. So this example says the pediatric infusion rate for potassium is 5 milli equivalents per hour. If 9 milliliters of a 39.2% solution of potassium acetate is diluted to 1 liter of infusion solution. Calculate the proper infusion rate in milliliters per hour. So this is uh, also a media equivalence calculation question, but it involves different layers of thinking. And so we want to connect all the information that we know from percentage concentration and add that to uh, the media equivalence calculations as well. So in terms of process, what that is going to actually look like is you are going to start off by first determining the amount that we have in milligrams. 
And the way we want to capture that is to state that this 39.2% implies that you have 39.2 grams in each 100 milliliter solution. Now, notice you are using 9 ml, so we need to find the quantity of potassium that is in there, or the potassium acetate inside 9 ml. So we start off with a quick proportion, which would be 39.2 grams is present in 100 milliliters. What's going to be the quantity in grams for 9 ml? So we go ahead and solve for X. X is going to be equal to 39.2 grams times 9 ml divided by 100 milliliters. Now the milliliters cancel out and you end up with 3.5 to 8 grams, but we need this to be in milligrams, so we do a quick conversion. One gram is a thousand milligrams. So the grams cancel out, and you end up with 3528 milligrams. So what we need next is to use the Millioculeus calculations equation. Once again, MEQ equals MG, weight in milligrams divided by molecular weight times the valence. We just found the milligrams. We need to have the molecular weight and the valence. So let's focus on, on that. Now, potassium acetate, the molecular weight of potassium acetate, which is KC2H3O2, the molecular weight here is going to be essentially 98. Now let's talk about the valence. You have KC2H3O2. The valence is going to be 1, but how do you get the 1? The way it works is this compound is going to dissociate in water to a potassium cation and then the acetate, so C2H3O2 acetate anion. Now the valence we're talking about is either the absolute charge on the cation or the absolute charge on the anion. And so in either case, the valence is going to be equal to 1. So what we want to do next is find this milli equivalence. And MAQ now is going to be equal to the 3528. Divided by 98 times valence, which is 1. And this is going to be equal to essentially 36. But we are not done yet. We now need to correlate the MEQ to determine the volume in ml per hour using this piece of information right here. So what this is telling us is that in every single liter, so a liter is a thousand milliliters, in every single liter of infusion, you're going to have 36 milli equivalents in there. Okay, so let's express that at a very elegant ratio. So that would imply that a 1,000 ml of infusion solution contains 36 MEQ. What we can do next is we, if you multiply this by this rate, the 5 MEQ per hour, now the milli equivalents cancel out. And what you essentially have is units of ml per hour, which is what the question is asking for. So we do a quick simplification. We multiply all the terms in the numerator, so 1,000 ml times 5, and divide it by all the terms in the denominator. That would be 36 times an hour. And this is going to be equal to 138.89. So this question was a little bit tricky, and uh, hopefully this helped deepen your understanding, just like the topic of today's video session is uh, uh, talking about. And so you have a, a better handle on what you need to do when it comes to all types of milli equivalence calculations. Now, once again, if you need more practice or you just want to see an exhaustive tutorial, I'm going to put a link to a playlist in the description. So I hope you found this video tutorial session useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. 
if you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.